Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and there's no ASMR today. Hello everyone, how's it going? Today's video, we're going to be talking about the fact that the NA side of the game is actually getting Christmas. Yay! Not to be confused with Japan, who's getting, from all, for some reason, a fucking rerun of Karna. Instead of Quetz. What the fuck? Anyway, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to get into it. Christmas 2020 is 2020 is what 2020 and 2022 is what we can expect. Um, the site hasn't updated yet, but I believe on the website they have the exact time it's released. Um, it will be on 12:11, so it's going to be basically a week from yesterday. No, it's going to be in one, two, three, four, five-ish days. So there you go. The Path of the Santa Claus, the sealed Christmas presents. That's what it's called in uh, the North America side. So we're going to take a look at what's inside here, and you know, we'll talk about it. Usually, this video I had been waiting for this one because I was ready to go. Like, yo, no matter what do this event and no matter what you should still do this event because karn is very good but you should do this event regardless because he does not come back for a very long time it's supposed to be that a rerun is supposed to happen the next year but Fago is a very dumb game and they realize that there's certain events that <laughs> you need to have done for christmas all of Fago's big events happen on christmas so in order to make time for it, they will actively not rerun the Christmas event. It's really dumb. I don't like it. And that's why Samba Quest has never come back. If you ever wondered why was that, it's because of that. It's not for the fake bullshit reason of someone made up that it's because of Kaniku Man. Kaniku Man is a parody manga. If Kaniku Man was coming after Fago for being a parody, it'd be kind of like throwing a, you know... It'd kind of be like throwing a stone in a glass house. Very stupid. The only reason... It's a conspiracy theory at this point, but whatever. Point is, that's the reason why Samba Quetz has never come back. And also, all her banner is... Uh, I, I, just, I literally said I can't go into this. Alright, let's go into this event, huh? Otherwise, I'll just go on and on about Samba Quetz. Sorry, Quetz is literally my favorite unit in the game, so... So this is the event. You need to at least clear Fuyuki to so have access to this, so that's a very good way of doing it. The ser the servants we're getting is Karna Santa and Viaritia. Speaking of quests, she does look a little bit like her. And we have bonuses here. We have the event award C, which is Cherry Icicle. Um, quick card performance up by 5%, MP damage 10%, start battle with... 30% MP gauge that I believe turns into 50% when fully max on limit broken. Yeah, so not not too bad, I would say. Pretty decent quick. As far as free options go, that's a pretty solid one. Endowed Hero, when attacking with the engraved card, gain 3 crit stars and heals the equipped servant by 200 HP. Staff of the Dragon Saintess, when engraved on a buster card, increase the card's crit damage against dragon trite at dragons by 30%. And Tarkus, when attacking with the engraved card, inflict poison towards the target, 300 HP, 3 turns, increase the engraved card's crit damage by 5%. So those are the event award C CC that you can get and put onto whatever dude you like. Here is the summon banners. So this is summon 1, this is the one I'm going to go at, uh, gonna be talking about. Summon 2, I'm going to bring it up here just because there's a small chance. I don't think it's probably going to be happening at this point because he is coming up uh, next year. But, I still think it's likely that for Summoning 2, we might see Arjuna Altar in here. Um, Arjuna Altar, I'm pretty sure is... Yeah, he has a 50% bonus. He's actually attached to the story of this one. Um, people were expecting him when he first came around. And actually, I'm curious... No, on the JP side, there's no way they're going to be returning his banner because there's someone else up at the moment. And it's really just a weird filler event. But anyway... Um, yeah, this banner is bad. There's no reason for anyone, especially with Muramasa on the corner. As much as I like uh, Arjuna because he comes with a monkey and Karna because I think he's kind of cool. And Parvati. Um, there's really no reason to summon on this banner. So I'm not... They're also all <laughs> always in the banner, so you might get accidentally spooked by any of them. So no real reason to go crazy summoning for him. So just probably don't. But here are the new units. The only new unit is Ritra, and she's also always in the banner. My suggestion is literally don't summon on this banner. There's no reason to summon on this banner. <laughs> Unless you really like Ritra and you want Martha Ruler. Because it is always nice to kind of get a um, 
summer unit, especially when this one's going to have its own solar raid up. And shout out to Carlos, or Solarak, because I know he wants Beowulf. So he's going to be summoning for Beowulf. Oh, I hope you finally get him after so many years. Um, and here are the CDs that come with it. Twinkle Star, arts 10% up, MP damage 10%, gain 3 crit stars. Red Box, Buster 10%, crit damage 8%. And Freeze Frame, another one of the Georgios... I don't know who... We have to talk about this at some point. Georgios has some of the most beautiful CE art, and he has maybe one of the most ugliest base form art in the game. This is what Georgios looks like in his art. His his actual stage 4 is actually pretty nice, but it's also just like, yeah, he still looks a little derpy. That's how Georgios looks regularly. If you look at any of his craft essence CEs, though, he is the most beautiful man <laughs> in the history of the world. Look at this man. No, go back. We have to... With so, someone on that team. Look at this. This does not look anything like the Georgios I know. Even in here, the Edmund Dante sees. It's a fine looking man in the background there. Go into, I think, the spirit travel one. I think Georgios. No, this one actually kind of looks like Georgios here. But it also looks like he's having a hell of a time just kind of skipping around. Anyway... I digress. Point is, they really like the good-looking Georgios art and that continues on here with the craft essences. It is really funny for whatever reason. I don't know who has him doing it. Where is he on here? Oh, he's right there. Anyway. He's a 3C once again. So there you go. Now let's talk about the actual man who's actually worth having here. We'll talk about Karna Santa. So Karna Santa is a saber. He has two quicks, one art, two busters, four hits, three hits, three hits, and five hits, respectively, for the extra hit at the five hit. He is the footed Santa A as his first skill. Increase on quick performance for three turns. Increase on buster performance three turns. Increase on crit damage for three turns. 30%, 30%, and 50% crit damage. Second skill, Flashing Fist A. Grant self evasion for two attacks three turns. Great. Increase on crit star absorption for one turn. Increase on crit damage on quick cards for one turn. 500% absorption and the 100% crit damage for that one turn. Third skill, Hero of Charity, Holy Knight EX. Charges one ally's MP gauge and grants them a debuff immunity three times for three turns. That's crazy. 20% MP and then this bonus effect, which uh, will comes in handy more than you would think. Passive skill, Magic Resistance A, Divinity A, Hard Puncher EX. Increase on crit damage of Buster cards by 12%. It's a good thing he only has one arts. Um, and his rank A Noble Phantasm is an anti-unit 8 hits. Uh, removes one enemy's gut status, activates first, and then deals damage to them. MP level is, uh, level 1 is 1,200 and 2,000 at level 2,000 at level 5. <laughs> Increase on quick performance for one turn. At charge level one, it's 20%. And if you get it all the way to five, it is at 40%. This man is very good. That's all you really need to know. I think he's probably still the best single target... Um, single target saber for quick. Like, there's not a lot of them. It's like him and... Yeah, it's Caesar. Was Fergus? No, I thought Fergus was Buster and also AoE. He is Buster and AoE. Is it really just Caesar? <laughs> no, there has to be another one. If I look at these dudes long enough, I will remember. No, he's art. Uh, so, uh, Fran is definitely uh, quick. She has to be. Yeah, she's quick. Uh, the Ermut has to be quick. Unless he's... Yeah, no, he's quick. But still, a free level 5 saber. Oh, well, Stelfo's, you know, Stelfo's a Stelfo. But the thing that uh, makes him so good after looking at all these is that he's just, for a free unit, he's literally just here to do a buttload of damage. Like, the this 50% increase to crit damage is very nice for three turns. He has very nice 30%, uh, 30%, not too bad. I would have preferred if it was just straight up three turns. But in theory, in three turns, you will literally just use two... Actually, this might actually end up working a little bit better if you get loop it and such. But anyway... This works out either way, is what I'm trying to say. Second skill is pretty nice, so you know that if you're going full quick card, you're going to be getting a lot of damage in. That is 150% crit damage for all three quicks. 
Uh, if you can get that done. This has a nice added bonus of being able to be used on anyone besides him as well. And it's always nice to have NP gain on quick, quick dudes because it's very hard for them to gain NP gain. And the thing that is most important is that he actually has a lot of hits on his Noble Phantasm, which you need in quick because they usually have trouble gaining NP. And he especially needs it because he has like one arts card, so he really needs it to kind of carry its weight. The quick cards that he also has are four hits. So in general, this is a really good ass single target unit that is also just free that you can just straight up get. It's super simple. Just play the event. Um... Yeah, just really well done. I'm surprised that they made him so good and then also just made him free and then just never brought him back. <laughs> just funny. Finally, we'll go into the others. Uh, Beowulf, I don't need to go into. He's Beowulf. If you want Beowulf, you're, then your name is Solrock and you're, or Carlos. And there you go. Martha. <laughs> I'll talk about Martha. Um, very simple unit. Three Buster, one Quick, one Arts. First skill, it charges on MP gauge and then increase attack if found on water side 30% and 20%. Grant self debuff immunity for one time, recovers on HP by 3000. Third skill is Jacob's Limbs, increase on damage against demon, divine, or undead by 100%. Magic resistance EX, third skill is a bonus against berserkers. And then her rank A plus Noble Phantasm, which she eventually gets a strengthening for, is the anti unit anti dragon 10 hit combo, deal damage to one enemy. One uh, at level one, it's eight hundred percent, eight hundred percent damage up, and it's one thousand two hundred percent, one thousand, twelve thousand, twelve thousand percent at level five. Five hundred percent chance to reduce the enemy's defense for one turn activates first, and it's twenty percent divine its defense. And I forget what this does without that. It's literally just more damage. That's all this is, just more damage and more defense down. Uh, I always like this unit. Especially if I'm fighting against a demon, divine, or undead, and they are not a berserker, because she just is very tanky and very solid and for a single target. Obviously, probably not used in a lot of things, but I still find use for her. Mine, I think, is also NP level 5. <laughs> 5 or 4? I don't remember. It's very high up there. Um, so I'm happy to have her for that very reason. Uh, yeah, there's not much else to say here. I like Martha. I think she's pretty decent. Pretty nice, pretty cool, and there we go. And also hard to get, so if you're a big fan of Martha, this is your best chance to get her now. Definitely usable. Vitra, aka the unit that no one, one of the very many units no one remembers when they came out, because they came out in the weirdest time. Which is a shame, because I think she has a cool design. Two quicks, two arts, one buster, four hits, three hits, two hits, and five hits for the extra. <sighs> Active skills, the all-penetrating Vardia. Please tell me if I'm saying these wrong and give, tell me the correct way of pronouncing them because I i don't know any other language but English. Increase own arts performance for three turns. Increase own crit star absorption of arts cards for one turn. Uh, the arts increase is 30% and the absorption is 500%. As second skill is the predestined... Predestined Divine Threat A increases own party's uh, damage against divine enemies for three turns and then charges own NP gauge. 30% NP gauge uh, charge and versus divine, it's 30% up. And that is three turns. Uh, the Eternal Immortal Demon EX grants self gut status for one time, five turns. Charges own NP gauge every turn for five turns. Increases own party's NP damage for one time, five turns. Uh, the th 3,000 HP, 10% to party NP, to, to the MP gauge, um, and then 20% to MP damage, which is okay. This is one of those abilities where these are all good abilities, but because there's three of them, they're not fully getting everything, I feel like. Like, I, I probably would have sacrificed one of these for more of the other, I think. Mm, oh yeah, Let the, maybe that's just personal old preference though. Passive skill is why did I click that? Uh, magic resistance A increases on debuff resistance by twenty percent, and Dragon Kin A increases on buster performance by ten percent, which is on damage taken by one hundred eighty. Her pen skill for the third one is an increase in damage against the adventure type, and then her noble phantasm is a arts rank EX. Asura Shrista, O oh, Demon Cover, All the Heaven and Earth, an anti-world noble phantasm that deals damage to all enemies, seals their skills for one turn, 
Reduces their crit attack chance by 20% for 3 turns. Um, NP level at level 1 is 450% damage, and at level 5 it's 750%. And then also reduces their arts resistance for 3 turns. And yeah, it's 10% of charge 1. If you get it all the way to charge 5, it's 30%. I think she's, uh, she ends up being pretty solid. Obviously, you would probably want to use her for looping. Um, she only has three hits, but I think with arts, it's usually enough, especially if they're bringing, like, especially with being able to charge her own MP gauge and having an MP gauge charger of 30%, like, yeah, she's gonna be able to, um, to loop no problem. So there you go. There's really nothing else to say here other than I think she'd probably make a pretty decent looper. I actually don't know because I haven't seen a lot of things about her, but it seems like for what she wants to do, she would just kind of be solid at that. Um, yeah, she seems solid to me. Like, not nothing really speaks out to me as like, oh, they should definitely get buffed. Because um, nothing really doesn't jump out at me. The most they could probably do, which is what they like to do, is just give more damage to this. But I don't really know if that... Yeah, I just don't really know. But either way, if you try and pull for her, then you'll have some nice, decent fun doing some arts looping with Lancer, I think. But yeah, those are the ends. It's a shame because I really do like her design, but there's just no reason for me to summon at the moment. She does look a lot like Quetz. She does look a lot like Quetz, but anyway. That's the end of today's video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it's not too weird and rambly. I am still very tired. I didn't get much sleep. I just came off of a long-ass night at work that I'm about to go back into. So, yeah, finding time to make videos is a hell of a thing. But thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, as always, you can leave a comment down below. Tell me how you're feeling about this banner, how you're feeling about summoning, how excited are you for Karna. And, of course, this is also... Lotto grind season, which I forgot to mention at the beginning because I'm so fucking tired that I forgot that it's actually lottery season. Holy shit. So before I end it, I'll say, hey, lotto is coming. And then also they have the good box. And inside this good box is a black box that gives some good stuff. You, It's only for, this is where you actually get five EXP from stuff. But there's only like 200 of these and then you're done. Like you couldn't infinitely grind these. This would be crazy. Um... Yeah, see, only one time 200 items. So that's how it goes. There's no reset limo on the regular lotto. And I think on the regular lotto, what you have here is horseshoes, seeds, dust, and uh, spinal fluid. And yeah, not anything that I actually need. I think this is the first lotto where I'm just like, eh. Eh, I don't really need any of these. I already have plenty of dust. I already have plenty of fluid. I have plenty of seed, and I have plenty of horseshoe, so I don't have to worry too much. Uh, this would be nice from the exchange ticket, but that's about it. But yeah, it's another thing to potentially get ready to grind for, and this event could potentially last a very long time, because as you can see here, this went from December 16th to the 30th, so I bet it would be equally take a long-ass time. But anyway, I'm gonna get off now. What? That sounds weird. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna end the video. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good day, and I wish you the best of luck if you end up summoning for them in five days when this comes out. Goodbye, everyone. Release Samba Quetz, you fuckers.